This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. P3 Business Analysis, June 2009. Question 1 Green Tech. To benefit fully from this presentation, you will need a copy of the June 2009 P3 paper. This is available for downloading from the website shown. The presentation looks at how the question can be approached and develops an answer. Remember you have 15 minutes reading time. Read, reread, annotate the question paper in that time. Use that time for the 50 mark case study. Go to the requirements first to alert you about what to look for in the question. Part A of the requirement says evaluate the current strategic position of green tech using a SWOT analysis. There are 12 marks for that. So if there are 12 marks and we're doing a SWOT analysis, that should be three items each for strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats. We don't just want to put down a one word point you want to make a sentence for each of them. This is what we'll concentrate on to start with. It's worth looking at the Part B requirement. The panel selected the proposal of Professor Aguan as a winning proposal and we are to write a briefing paper evaluating the three proposals and justifying the selection of the proposal of Professor Aguan as the best strategic option for green tech to pursue. We'll perhaps keep that at the back of our mind, but I imagine that something of what we say in Part B is likely to be the result of what we find in Part A. Now you need to spend 10 to 15 minutes carefully reading and rereading the question and annotating the question paper. This will simulate your 15 minutes reading time that you're given in the exam. Remember, we're concentrating on the SWOT analysis. So as you go down, we suggest that you annotate the question paper, S, W, O or T, as you see items which may be candidates for being strengths, weaknesses, opportunities or threats. This will make it very easy for you later on to explain to the examiner the nature of your analysis. Also, always remember that almost certainly vital information is present in the figures which are given by the examiner. Quantitative information is always interesting and you must never ignore it. Here we're shown how the sales have developed and how the marketing has developed over three years. Almost certainly, something of the SWOT analysis results can be found in here. Remember, if you think something is a strength, and you can explain why you think it is a strength, it is almost impossible for the marker to deny you a mark, even if that wasn't originally regarded as a strength when the question was designed. That's why it's going to be important for us to write our answers in sentences because a sentence allows you to explain and to justify your reasoning. So spend the 10 to 15 minutes now, then we'll go on and develop our answer. OK, let's look at the annotation of the question with respect to the SWOT analysis. I'm not going to read through every word of the question that would take too long, but I will uh, outline or draw your attention to areas where I think we could make something of them. So if we look uh, down here, uh, selected green, we know that there is currently a lot of political influence and social uh, awareness of green issues so here we have a company which is very firmly established in the kind of green or ecological area uh, and one would have thought that this might produce opportunities for the company or it might be a strength if you want to regard it as that 
uh, a company is has a reputation of being a green company providing green solutions and that could be a strength a kind of brand relationship uh, further on in around the same paragraph here we have 70 percent of global electronics uh, industry uh, uses green tech components this is undoubtedly a strength the global electronics industry is huge and if you have 70 percent of those people using your technology this must be a very strong position indeed an excellent reputation further on down here uh, the company has no manufacturing capability this is probably some sort of weakness you can look at it either way it could be a strength if you've got no manufacturing capability uh, it means all your costs are variable however it does mean that you are at the beck and call to some extent of your manufacturers uh, for the time being I'll put it down as a weakness we may want to change that and change our arguments slightly when we get down to actually writing out the squat analysis it does have extensive hardware testing facilities and this is probably a strength furthermore here we have this business about the management team from uh, 1990 still runs the company undoubtedly you can build this up as a strength these people have immense industry knowledge usually some sort of continuity of management is regarded as a good thing moving on down a little bit there has been quite good sales growth there's roughly plus 10 percent here and I suppose roughly around 12 percent there I haven't used my calculator on this here but generally speaking if sales are increasing it's a good thing it'd be quite hard to argue that increasing sales are a bad thing unless with increasing sales you had increasing losses however 64 million and we are dealing here in figures of uh, millions 64 millions is absolute peanuts it's an IT if you were to look at uh, Lenovo or Hewlett Packard or Dell 64 million would barely get them through a week I should think and the problem with small companies in an industry which is high tech is a real problem with research and development expense and how you're going to keep up with the opposition you really can't throw as much money at research and development as they can so almost certainly the uh, the size here is equal to weakness a little bit further on uh, we see here that the company has a sizable cash surplus and it, it's actually linked to a figure of 17 million that must be a strength it would be very difficult to argue that a cash surplus was a weakness or a threat to the company however uh, it does say the board cannot agree on how this cash could be used and if you wanted to you could put this up a little bit this this idea of dissension or a slightly divided board as being a potential weakness maybe not a very strong one uh, but undoubtedly some sort of disagreement on the board is is not a good sign we come on then to look at the uh, marketing expenditure and this is tiny uh, 210,000 as a as a as a uh, comparison to the turnover of 64 million is absolutely very very small indeed probably that's a weakness to the company it doesn't spend enough on marketing and making itself known and so on uh, perhaps the success has been basically to do with its technical excellence but we, we don't know but there's certainly no problem in setting up a weakness uh, stemming from very very small marketing expenditure <clears throat> moving on a little the government has announced that there's going to be a preferential procurement policy for energy efficient computers with a high recyclable content undoubtedly this is a strong opportunity get in with the government 
uh, get known in their presumed schemes which are going to be running here of approved suppliers or whatever and you're going to be made it says that they should here uh, acquire their own manufacturing capability now at the minute that could be an opportunity to acquire it but you can also argue that because they don't have a manufacturing capability in-house that perhaps there's a weakness uh, there because there's this problem here about securing a supply chain so we have both opportunities and weaknesses and maybe even threat if you needed that a threat that the supply chain is going to break down or the supply chain or the supplier is going to go elsewhere Professor Aguan of Midchai University here has presented us here with an opportunity. He says that we should look at our capabilities, not our products. He says we're looking too narrowly at the future, and the implication is if we widen our outlook, this will become a good thing. Going further on down, we have here uh, some virtual prototypes of machines we're looking about here this means that we're able to construct virtual prototypes of machines and equipment by this process of design delivered through a web service is still under development and that could easily be, could easily be built up as a threat the threat that the thing doesn't work the threat that we have spent a lot of money trying to develop something which yields no income. We don't know, but nobody knows. Until something works, it doesn't work. Where have we gone to next? Well, uh, down here we have uh, quite a big problem here of uh, inquiries which don't go very much further uh, here. We've also got here information about Green Tech's Korean manufacturer. The Korean manufacturer here could be a threat from exchange rates. If the pound weakens substantially against Korean currency, our costs are going to be considerably higher. This appears to be something of a weakness. How come 40% of our inquiries go no further? Is there something wrong with our uh, marketing effort or uh, website or, or pricing finally on this we have this business here about recent feedback recent feedback from customers suggests that mr. promised delivery dates are the biggest complaint this is certainly a weakness something has gone wrong with their system. Anyway, that's how we would have read through and annotated our question paper. We haven't counted up, but almost certainly we have at least 12 remarks to make here. And if they're explained properly, it's very difficult to see how they couldn't gather us something close to 12 marks. A good start to the paper. Our answer to part A of Green Tech is available for downloading. Part B of the requirement asks us to write a briefing paper. It's not clear whether the examiner has in mind a specific format for that but I would have thought it's probably safe to head it up rather like a memorandum. And it asks you to evaluate, and evaluate means make a judgment of, be critical of, the three proposals, and then to justify the selection of the third proposal, and to say why it is best. It does appear that disagreement with the selection of that third option is not open to us here. The question does seem to be saying that the third option is best and we have to say why that is. The question is rather kind to us. 
it has already provided us with an analysis using Ansoft's matrix and has categorized option one as an existing product in an existing market, option two as a new product in an existing market, and option three as a new market with existing products. And this should give us some structure. Now we have to go and look at each proposal really in conjunction with the SWOT analysis. How well would a proposal fit in with the company's strengths? Or is it depending on weaknesses? How well might a proposal fit in with opportunities? Here's our answer to part B of Green Tech. You can read it for yourselves, of course. But our main points are as follows. The first proposal looks attractive. The segment of Ansoff's matrix has the lowest risk. And doing more of the same would seem to be an easy option. However, there are perhaps a couple of problems. First of all, making computers represents only 6.25% of the company's turnover. So the company has been asked to concentrate on what, at the moment, is a very small part of its operations. Secondly, making and selling fully assembled computers will put the company in direct competition with the giants of the industry. How could a small company like Greentech possibly compete against mainstream computers made by Lenovo and Hewlett Packard, to name but two of the large producers? Although at the moment Greentech may seem to have a leading position in the production of green computers, almost certainly, if this became important for a marketing purpose, almost certainly the industry giants could soon start to compete successfully in producing green computers. Suggestion two is that we set up our own manufacturing plant. There's 17 million available to do this, but really this is very small compared to the size of manufacturing plants required to compete in the real world. The final proposal, and the one which has been adopted, is that we perceive our core competences to be in the general area of green technology, rather than being the supplier of individual products. This has got the great advantage that know-how, advice and consultancy is much harder for large companies to erode. It should be more easily possible for green tech to keep a competitive edge. This is a resource-based strategy, and notice that we've brought in the work of Prahalad and Hamel as evidence to support this view. Finally, part C. C1 is a relatively creative part of the question, asking us to identify deficiencies and to suggest ways of putting them right. This is where the diagram provided in the question will be used. C2 is more factual. It is asking us to talk about simply the relationship between process design and strategic planning. Uh, and as always, we should try to bring in some theoretical models or frameworks to support what we're saying. Much of the detail about the ordering and configuring process is given on the diagram with the question. This shows which departments and companies are involved in each stage. There's also some information available where it talks about specific problems like high dropout rates from customers after they receive replies about delivery dates and then another dropout when credit is refused. It's a little difficult to generalize about these diagrams, but what we can say 
is that every time something changes from one department to another, there's either going to be a transfer of information or physical goods. And every time that transfer occurs, there can be delay, damage, errors introduced into the process. Inefficiencies are to be found mostly at the boundaries. The sorts of deficiencies we might hope to find are those which arise from duplication of effort, delay, gaps and disconnects, and where there may be activities which are not value-adding, and which could be eliminated without hurting the overall process or product that is received by the customer. Anyway, have a look at this diagram and see if you could see where there may be over complex and somewhat illogical steps involved and see if you could imagine how it could be made more straightforward, quicker and more reliable. Here's our answer to part C. It starts by reiterating the very specific problems which they have, a 40% and a 20% dropout rate. It's going to take the view that by and large it might be difficult to do much with the 20% dropout rate on credit checks. You can't eliminate everyone applying for credit who's then going to be refused. Perhaps the more serious problem is the 40% of inquiries which don't go any further uh, after putting people to some inconvenience. Why might that occur? Why are 40% dropping out at that stage. And we've suggested uh, three possible reasons. First of all, that the cost of the computer is more than expected. Secondly, that the delivery date was further away than expected. And finally, when you go online and order things, you tend to want an instant reply. And if this system has a delay in it, then people can go away and reconsider or investigate other suppliers whom they may prefer. Trying to get a little bit of theoretical knowledge into the answer, we have here that business process redesign patterns can be classified as re-engineering, simplification, value-added analysis and gaps and disconnects. We probably can't do much about re-engineering from a zero-based uh, starting point. We simply don't have the information for that. But we could look for simplifications, particularly with the swim lane diagram, uh, value-added analysis, and where gaps and disconnects may be occurring. Basically, uh, what we have concluded is that there is far too much coming and going uh, the order goes to the manufacturer, the manufacturer thinks about it, sends it back to green tech, sends it back to the customer. The order then it goes again to the manufacturer, it, uh, it then goes back to green tech, it then goes there for testing, it then goes to the haulage company, and then to the customer. That undoubtedly could be greatly simplified and effectively uh, involving green tech in much less of the process than they are currently they could outsource much more than they now do and cut out their continual involvement in the process, which is simply inhibiting its efficiency, probably introducing errors and certainly of little value-added benefit. The answer to C2 is perhaps more theoretical but it does specifically ask us to relate the answer back to what's happening in green tech. Anyway, it's important to try and set out some theoretical information here. And we've started with an overview of what strategic planning is. It then talks about we want everything to be done effectively, efficiently and economically. And those are well-recognized qualities of a well-designed process. And finally, and specifically with reference to what's happening in green tech, the Harman Process Strategy Design Grid can be used to bring in some discussion 
about what green tech should subcontract and what it should keep for itself. Almost certainly the conclusion will be that it should subcontract much of the manufacturing. What it should keep for itself, uh, where its real crown jewels are, where it makes its money, is in holding on to its expertise in green technology in general, uh, because certainly this is going to be uh, followed up if option three is adopted.